Galaxy S, my Nook Color, and a huge mug of tea. And today I'm going to run you through all the things I've sort of picked up on using the Nook for about a week and whether I think you guys should think about getting one. So first thing, I'm just going to go over the hardware very quickly. And I've got it macroed really close up here, so if it's a bit fuzzy, don't worry, because I'm going to be bringing stuff close to the camera. But sort of the features around the device is, again, I'll show you this in the unboxing, but this little flap for the SD card, which is actually quite nice. It looks really nice and streamlined on the back of the device, and it's easy to get to. So I really like that. This little hook, or I don't know what you call that, loop, I didn't really find a use for it. I mean, you could maybe put something like keys on it, but I never would consider doing that because it would scratch it but I do quite like the features on the front of the device it sort of makes it look a bit more different it doesn't just look like a flat panel so I really like that um, the front button here is really nice I didn't I thought it was capacitive when well before I got one but I quickly realized it's a pushable one which is really nice then on the side you just got the volume rockers and power button which both work fine and the three and a half mil headphone jack which is of course really nice for listening to music the device itself is a lot heavier than I thought it would be, having used stuff like the Kindle, which is what I sort of saw this as a competitor for. But you do get used to it, and it's quite nice because it does actually feel like you're holding something that's not going to break in your hand. And without the build quality, it's really nice. It's really solid. This is sort of a matte plastic, but it feels quite high-end. And again, this is plastic, not metal, but it does feel quite expensive, quite well-made, with a little Nook logo there. On the back we've also got the speaker which if I had any complaint it would be that this is absolutely crap. There's no other way of saying it, it's really poor. But I mean you're not going to be using the speaker on this much. But the before I rooted it, one of the books that came with you could get it to read it out to you and it was pretty much inaudible unless you had the whole room completely silent. I mean if you were trying to do it and there was any noise, anyone cooking, anyone speak, you just couldn't hear it. So that would be my one complaint. And then you've got the charging uh, socket here. And actually one of my favourite features with this, which is completely useless, is that when you plug it in, the cable lights up, which I think is quite cool. It turns green when it's fully charged. That's just a little thing I liked. And I thought this was micro USB or mini USB, or whichever one that one is. But it's actually not. It won't fit in the Galaxy S. And, I mean, I'll show you. When you get to sort of here... It just won't go in any further. I'm not going to try and push it in. But that's just strange because I thought that was the same, but it's not. So I think you have to use this dedicated lead. And also, when you charge, you can't charge off a computer USB, which is really irritating. You have to plug it in through the wall charger. And that, that's actually my other issue with it, apart from the speaker. But with those two issues out of the way, everything else about this device I love. Um, you can probably see here the screen looks a bit reflective. And yeah, it's an LCD, it's like a phone screen, it is reflective. So it's not going to be like the Kindle where it's completely e-ink screen, so nothing reflects. But I think even though that's one of his greatest weaknesses as an e-reader, it's also one of his good features because I can read in bed and I don't have to have the light on. Um, the screen's not really annoying thing with a refresh rate, isn't it? But anyway, never mind, You can't. that's not on the Kindle, that's just through the camera. But this looks really reflective and horrible, but... If I'm holding this up to my face, like off camera, it's so easy to read. I mean, you can't read in direct sunlight, but I'm never going to be reading this in direct sunlight anyway. I read on the train, sort of in my room, studying. If I read outside, I'll just get a book or do something else, because I mean, if you're outside, you probably don't want to be reading. But from an e-reading point of view, this is brilliant. If you just drop the brightness, it works perfectly fine. And obviously, if you root it, you can put all sorts of different stores on. I'm using the Kindle store. But there's Google Books, um, Aldeco, loads. There's a really good variety if you're going to use this as an e-reader, which is its sort of primary function. But saying that, it actually makes a very, very good tablet. And this is what's really blown me away with this little thing. Because, I mean, it's about 200 quid. And I think it's even cheaper if you buy it in the US to use in the US. It was a bit more expensive because I had to convert it and stuff like that. But this processor is really, really good and you can actually game really well on it. Um, I've got a gaming video coming out. I'll put a link to it in the bottom bar when it's actually out. It should be out later today or tomorrow. But I mean, it's got the same processor as the Droid X. And 
I'll just give you a quick example of Fruit Ninja. The process on this is really impressive. I mean, if you're looking to sort of get into the tablets sort of things, it's quite a new thing. If you're looking to experience a tablet, this is a really good to go for because it's quite cheap, it's small. The 7 inch screen is pretty much the perfect size, I think, now because I can hold it in one hand and use sort of thumb tight that way, thumb tight that way. It's not too big to carry around or put in a case or anything. So I think if you're looking to sort of break into the tablet market, this is a great tablet to go for because it's quite cheap. And if you think, oh, I want to go Tegra 2 with the um, Motorola Zoom or the new Galaxy S Tab ones that are coming out, then they're going to be quite a bit more expensive. They're only sort of 600, 500 quid. And they're sort of like the first technology with that as far as Android tablets go. So they do have their software niggles, and I mean, Zoom's been slated having a pretty poor screen and stuff like that, so it might be a good idea to wait for the second generation of those. And if you want something to sort of get you into the tablet mood, so to speak, in the meantime, this could be a really good purchase because it's cheap, fairly light, and it just works really well, guys. Um, what else can I show you? The battery's been pretty impressive. I can get a good 10 hours out of this. Um, even more if I've got Wi-Fi turned off and I'm just reading. Um, the battery's really impressive, especially from coming from a smartphone. I mean, the battery on this just dies so much quickly. Ugh. So much more quickly. There we go. Um, uh, what else? The interface I'm using on this is ADW Launcher with my own skin thrown on top. Um, I'll put a link in the bottom bar if you've got a Nook already and you want to get this. Um, what else? browser I'll show you but I mean I can't really stress enough guys if you want to get a tablet if you want to get into the Android tablet game so to speak and you aren't prepared to spend the 600 500 quid for a zoom I would definitely consider one of them. I mean the browsing is really, really quick on this that's one thing I've been really impressed with um, just how quick everything loads what should I go for Um, I'm not sure if it's got wireless N like a laptop built in, but it is really, really quick. And I mean, this isn't a particularly fast internet connection. You see there, and it goes out, you've got pinch to zoom. I mean, it's just really good. This ROM I'm running is CyanogenMod Mod um, CM7, and that's another really good thing about this. It's very hackable, and it's sort of loved by hackers at the moment, so there's a lot of stuff for it. So if you do want to sort of get into Android hacking and you're not prepared to do it on say your phone because you want that to be a reliable every day to day thing um, this might be good for you so that's another reason that I really like this so yeah I can't really <laughs> can't really say anything else you've probably got the idea that I really do love this and I really do if you want to keep up to date with stuff I'm doing with this you can follow me on Twitter um, at sticky as glue no at Android at night sorry at Android at night not sticky as glue um, if you want to keep up to date with all my things, <laughs> keep trying to use this as a power button now because the power button is on this side. Anyway, but yeah, keep up to date with me there. Um, as I said, I have a game video out soon. Um, Jealous Skins very kindly sent me a Jealous Skin for this, so I'll have that to review soonish. And I also might be getting a couple of cases from Trident. So I'll have plenty of stuff to do with this. If you've got any questions, sort of, will this run on it? anything like that just hit me up ASAP and if it's a game I'll try and put it into the gaming video if not I'll just answer the comments or if I get a lot of people asking the same question um, I'll do a video on it but yeah guys this has been the Nook Colour I hope that's sort of given you an insight into what this little thing can do um, I'm sort of running out of things to say so yeah I'll see you guys next time and oh one more thing I do have a giveaway running, um, link to that in the bottom bar, um, so good luck on that, and I'll see you guys next time, please subscribe, ta -ra.